It's the Roaring Twenties, only a hundred years later, and the world has a big problem. Like 1-6% to of the global GDP problem. The biggest culprit behind it goes by a simple name. The password. Passwords have been the default authentication method for decades, and not much has changed about that. Except we went from counting computing power in megahertz to gigahertz. No one even noticed, I know, but that's a thousand-fold increase just for computers in consumer devices. The first computer ever to beat a world chess champion did it in 1997. That's a quarter of a century ago. In 2013, the NSA and other advanced adversaries were able to brute force passwords with trillions of guesses per second. It can literally take less than a second for a computer to go through the possibilities and pull that password out. Information in this video can help people be more secure, so make sure it reaches as many people as possible. Share it, comment, like, and help me stay afloat by donating some crypto or becoming a patron. Thank you. The technology has far surpassed the level of protection passwords can offer, but we are still using them only with the non-binding recommendation of just try to make them more complicated. Think about it, half of your password security depends on making sure you do everything right. Create and manage complicated but unique passwords for each of your accounts that should periodically change every few months. Store your password somewhere safe with properly encrypted backups that should rotate every time you make a change in any of the dozens of your accounts. And you need to make sure that all of the devices and software you're using to store your passwords is up to date and your system isn't compromised and that you will never fall a victim of a phishing attack. And that last one, oh boy, let me show you how difficult that can be. Phishing is far more sophisticated than just the Nigerian print scams you get in your emails. Here you have an example of a phishing website. This one has the green lock icon, it's the ch domain, the website is completely identical to the ProtonMail website, so I'm clear, right? Well, if you know where to look and you look carefully, you'll catch the fish. This isn't the ProtonMail website, this is just a perfect clone hosted on a completely different server, and the only giveaway is that you know there is no E in the name ProtonMail. To a trained eye, this is an easy exercise, but what if you don't know the exact domain name of a certain service? One website is a legitimate payment processor, the other one is a clone that belongs to someone trying to trick you into giving them your card details. Both of these are real-life examples of phishing attacks caught in the wild. Phishing is cheap, but very sophisticated and effective. Phishing sites are booming. In 2020, their number reached 2.11 million, constituting a 25% annual increase. A decade ago, Google detected 317 phishing sites a day. Last year, it was 5,789. This number is bound to rise even higher, as remote office work has become a norm for millions of workers. Even if you know how to spot a fisher, all it takes is for your brain to freeze for a second on an autopilot and not notice the difference between an RN and an M and your pond. But remember how I mentioned that you're only half of your password security? The other half is completely outside of your control. All you can do is trust. Trust that companies that handle your login information won't get hacked and their password databases won't get exposed. Passwords are centralized, meaning the only way they can work is if the companies have access to them. And because of this, company databases are major targets of cyber attacks, exposing billions of records every year. 80% of hacking related data breaches involve compromising passwords. Organized campaigns aren't the only way your passwords can get stolen. Internal errors often lead to even more dramatic exposures. Facebook used to store passwords of half a billion users in plain text accessible to Facebook employees or anyone with access to the database. The fact that Facebook didn't follow the most basic standards of securing passwords before storing them isn't even the biggest story. The more fundamental problem is the centralization of password records in the first place. The most a company with a centralized password database can offer you is to hash them. Hashing is a one-way function of encrypting data, which is a problem because the same input will always produce the same hash output. Hence the reason brute forcing and dictionary attacks work. But hashing doesn't address the issue of password centralization at all. Any password recovery mechanism is susceptible to social engineering. A hacking practice where adversaries try to trick you or employees of a company to give them access into your account. Recovery questions like what's your mother's maiden name are a complete joke that pretends open source intelligence is not a thing. 65% of people still reuse passwords for multiple or all of their accounts, and it seems like no amount of security education is going to change that. Managing passwords sucks, 
The potential for error and disaster scenarios of losing access into your login information are a constant headache. Password logins yield a 56% success rate, and up to a third of users go through a password reset process in the first few weeks since registering. Passwords are inconvenient, so people try to make them convenient. For the level of our technological progress, passwords are completely outdated. It's impossible to resurrect them. Passwords are inherently insecure. So what's the solution? It's simple, we kill the password. Seriously, the future is passwordless. The best way to avoid getting hacked is to have nothing to hack. Passwordless is the only way out of the cybersecurity abyss. But wait, what are we gonna use to log into our accounts? Biometric security? No, that's not a solution. The real solution is decentralization of authenticators, in this case, replacing passwords with public key cryptography. In simple terms, the mechanism of public key authentication works in opposite to passwords. When you register with a password for an online service, the server asks you to send them your authentication. With public key cryptography, it works in reverse. The online service verifies that you hold the authentication on your device, and it is you who is requesting that the website is legitimate. This is done in a mathematically robust way that is impossible to crack with human technology. Most importantly, your authenticator never leaves your device. Ever. This mechanism was introduced into Fido, Fast Identity Online, a collection of open protocols for second-factor authentication technologies such as biometrics, Bluetooth low energy, near-field communication, or even USB security tokens like this one. All Fido protocols are based on public key cryptography so that no matter what implementation, the standard is always the same. The latest video protocols enable passwordless logins. It actually increases your account security if you completely abandon passwords and trust these Fido security tokens. So how does it actually work? Suppose you have a Fido authenticator like a USB security token and you want to register it with a website. When you present it by, let's say, plugging it in, the Fido device will mint a unique key pair for this particular website and this particular account. The key pair contains a public key and a private key. The public key is sent to the website with a handle, while private key stays locked inside your Fido security token. The key handle contains unique information about the website you're registering with and is used to identify with the correct key on your Fido token when logging in. This origin information about the website is crucial for future authentication. Because next time you try to log in, the website will send you a challenge. This account is associated with a public key and a key handle. Provide a signature to validate your identity. That's when you present your authenticator with an interestingly user-friendly experience. Just gently finger it and let the magic happen. The Fido token first verifies whether the provided key handle actually matches the key identity on the token. The match has to correspond to the origin website with a particular account on the origin Fido token. If any of these points doesn't match, the Fido token refuses to accept the challenge. If you're on a phishing website, signature won't happen. If you're on a different account, signature won't happen. If you present a different Fido security token, signature won't happen. But if everything matches perfectly, the Fido security key signs the challenge with a private key from the origin key pair and sends the signature back to the website, which verifies it with the stored public key and logs the user in. And that's it. Now you have an unnecessary understanding of public key cryptography on USB security tokens. You don't need to know any of this information to use Fido protocols. The whole registration process involves just two steps. Request second factor authentication and present your key. Login is the same. Just present your key and that's it. Implementation of Fido protocols isn't limited to just USB security tokens. This can happen natively on any device, including phones and laptops. Both Android and iOS implementations are in development, and once they are done, you'll be able to log into apps, websites, or authenticate services with on-device parameters. While hardware authentication like the one with USB security tokens will remain the king, even OS-level implementation is better than using passwords. All Fido protocols are resistant to phishing attacks. Because key pairs are unique for each online service and associate account, if an attacker creates a clone on a different domain, no matter how similar it looks to the human eye, it will generate a completely different origin and Fido will reject their challenge. 
the only way to remotely fish video protected accounts is to perform a sophisticated man in the middle attack when a user is registering their video token and covertly trick a user into downgrading their second factor to OTP or one time password generated with OTP amps or an SMS. If during registration you're prompted to add OTP, double check your connection is secure and the website is legitimate. If attackers have physical access to your video device, USB tokens, or other video implementations, they can compromise its defenses. So if you lose your video device, be sure to remove it from your accounts. As I mentioned before, the most amazing feature of the latest Fido protocol, called Fido2, is the possibility of passwordless logins. Because Fido2 devices remember account ID on every online service, you'd only need to present your key when signing in. Fido2 will maintain the same security level of your account even if there is no password. The technology is clearly there. Sites that do not support it are lagging behind. While many companies develop Fido security tokens, no company owns it. It's an open protocol that everyone can benefit from. Fido has a massive support behind it. Companies like Google or Samsung have been supporting it from its very beginnings, way before Amazon or Apple followed. Firefox and Chromium browsers have the widest support, with Windows, Android, and Linux taking the lead. There is a website called 2FA Directory that lists plenty of online services to check whether or not they support two-factor authentication. You can easily search a service to see if it supports hardware tokens. If you search for U2F, you'll get a list of all online services that support Fido Universal Second Factor Protocol. Not all hardware keys are created equal. I'd recommend the ones with open source hardware and firmware and third-party auditing. Yubico is popular, but their keys are not open, which means you have to trust the firmware they sell you. NitroKey and SoloKey are both open source and open hardware, and by all accounts, NitroKey takes the lead in the most secure and privacy-friendly experience to obtain Fido USB keys. Passwords have caused way too much damage, so share this video as much as you can so that more people are aware of much more secure solutions. Like and comment, donate some crypto, or become a patron. Thank you.